Although on face value everything looked fine, beneath the glamour of the 1930s, all was not well on our railways. Movie Tone News interviewed LMS chairman Lord Stamp. Station entrances and hoardings in Britain have been placarded with arresting slogans during the past fortnight. Perturbed by the ominous words, we asked Lord Stamp what it was all about. He told us that there had been a five million drop in railway receipts this year. It seems that the terms on which railways operate were fixed a hundred years ago before there was any road transport to challenge their supremacy. Road transport, which has become so efficient in recent years, is not bound by the limitations which Parliament put upon the railway monopoly of those early years. So despite the strenuous efforts made by the railway systems to meet competition by new rolling stock, improvement of services and acceleration of time schedules on the long runs, they still find themselves handicapped by the regulations devised all those many years ago. Having seen the arrival at Euston of the Coronation Scot, in case you wondered what train it was, we'll have a final word from Lord Stamp. Our receipts are dropping alarmingly. Matters are urgent. Prosperous railways are essential to prosperous commerce, and therefore to a prosperous nation. They could not be ready to help in wartime if they are weak in peacetime. All we are asking for is a square deal, a fair field and no favour. The state of freight in December 1938 with Lord Stamp clearly anticipating the coming war. During the hostilities, locomotive design concentrated on simplicity, economy and ease of maintenance. The Southern's very unusual Q1s of 1942 possessed all these qualities, plus a very wide operational range, achieved by stripping out every ounce of unnecessary weight so the engines could run over lightly laid branch lines and bridges. Although Stanier's Class 8 F freight engines had already been chosen as a standard for overseas war service, there was still a further need for a simplified version, built right down to austerity standards. This led to Robert Riddle's War Department Class of 1943, turned out by the hundred in both 280 and 210 versions. These were rather plain workhorses. Riddle said he didn't care if they were all pushed into the sea as soon as the war was over. In fact, by 1945, the WDs had proved themselves ideal for their task, and far from being pushed into the sea, hundreds were repatriated to join those still working in Britain. With the crying need for serviceable locomotives, these WDs went on to work for another 20 years on British railways, to the very end of steam, in August 1968. One enigmatic exception to the wartime building programme was the Southern's Merchant Navy class, designed by Oliver Bullied. Though clearly an express passenger Pacific, the Merchant Navies were mischievously described by Bullied as mixed traffic so as to comply with the government's wartime construction diktat forbidding the building of express locomotives. By 1946, and despite post-war constraints, some things were starting to return to normal. The Flying Scotsman, Britain's best-known express, gives passengers a sight they haven't seen since 1941. Restaurant cars and railway kitchens are back again. Wars may come and wars may go, but the sausage goes on forever. For men who've been off the job for four years, the chefs look pretty slick. But Chef Hock and Cook Humek are old hands at the game. Today 
these diners are on utility lines, ordinary Pullman coaches with tablecloths added. The dining car team were all doing the same job on the same train before the war. And it's not easy to serve the soup when the Scotsman is topping 60 miles an hour. Our cameraman covering the comeback of the dining car reports the food good for the times. Long distance travelers tell veteran conductor Richards they certainly appreciate it. Have you enjoyed your lunch, sir? I've enjoyed it very much indeed, thank you. It's a very pleasant change after about, what is it, four years of sandwiches. I can assure you we're very, very pleased to be back again. And I'm sure the public are pleased also and they deserve it. Thank you. With the war over, leisure travel was back on the agenda once again. And a day at the seaside was a treat to relish. It happened to be fine weather, but I expect London stations would have been like this anyway, for the vast majority of people intended to make the most of their first post-war Easter. As it was, the people put up with the crush, and the railways coped with the people. That streamlined Coronation Pacific looked pretty war-weary. Luxury travel, by the way, has returned in the shape of the Golden Arrow train, in which you can travel in complete comfort to the coast. After crossing the channel, you board the train again in France. If only this kind of travel were typical of journeys everywhere in Britain. But, well, maybe that's too much to hope for yet. The engine featured on the Golden Arrow newsreel was one of Oliver Bullied West Country Pacifics, a smaller version of the Merchant Navy Pacific of 1941. It also carried a so-called air-smoothed casing, which had nothing to do with streamlining and everything to do with mechanical washing plants. Oliver Bullied was a radical steam engineer, and his brief had been to take the southern from the bottom to the top of the railway lead table of innovative design. But as might be expected when so many new ideas are introduced all at once, along with the triumphs came disappointments. Heavy maintenance costs were high and, after 1948, when Britain's railways were nationalised, the new regime eventually decided to rebuild all the bullied Pacifics. The air smooth casing was removed, together with the mechanical complexities. The aim was to retain the best mechanical features whilst dispensing with the more troublesome aspects. The result was highly satisfactory. All the merchant navies were converted, and it was only the approaching end of steam in the 1960s that halted the programme halfway through the hundred odd smaller engines of the West Country and Battle of Britain classes. As late as 1961, members of the West Country class like Heartland were being rebuilt, virtually as new engines. The rebuilt bullied were, to all intents and purposes, the very last in the long line of British passenger locomotives, and their ultimate performance and reputation did them proud. We are very lucky that so many have survived. The West Country class were given the names of towns and landmarks in the holiday counties served by the Old Southern Railway. The directors had, quite rightly, judged this to be good public relations, especially with holiday making travellers in mind. But even as the bullied Pacifics were being rebuilt, the modernisation plan published in 1955 foresaw the end of steam traction and its replacement by diesel and electric locomotives. Within 13 years, steam would be eliminated from British Railway's main lines, despite the fact that the bullies were being rebuilt with projected working lives of another 20 years or so.